in the hit TV series The Sopranos, who were the Lupatazzi crime family based on in real life. Let's check it out. It is often stated that the fictional DeMeo crime family, of which Tony Soprano was a member, was based on the real-life New Jersey-based De Cavalcanti crime family, with several storylines having parallels with real events in the history of the De Cavalcanti family, including the discovery of one of the family's mobsters being a homosexual. In the show, Mafia captain Vito Spatafor is revealed to be gay and is subsequently murdered. In real life, John D'Amato, the acting boss of the DeCavalcanti family, was suspected of homosexual activity and murdered in 1992. David Chase, the creator of The Sopranos, also took some inspiration from the Genovese crime family, basing some characters on members of New Jersey-based Genovese captain Richie the Boot Boyardo's crew, as well as borrowing Genovese boss Vincent Cingiganti's famous crazy act for a storyline involving the character Corrado Jr. Soprano. But who was the Brooklyn-situated Lupatazzi crime family based on in real life? Let's start by taking a quick look at some of the other real-life crime families mentioned in The Sopranos. The Genovese crime family is referenced several times throughout the six seasons of The Sopranos. In the first season, Tony Soprano and his guys are watching a TV show where a former fictional Genovese family mobster turned informer is giving an interview. Vincent Rizzo. Yes. Former soldier in the Genovese family, government witness turned best-selling author. Meadow Soprano also references Charlie Luciano, a former boss of what would become known as the Genovese crime family. Salvatore Lucana, better known as Charlie Lucky Luciano, who organized the five families. The Bonanno crime family is also referenced on a couple of occasions. When Eugene Ponticorvo is looking to retire after receiving a substantial inheritance, he references Joseph Bonanno. Well, I, I thought about that. And it was Joe Bonanno. <laughs> Come on. When FBI agent Robin Sanseverino is discussing how long it takes to build a case, with Adriana Laserva, she mentions former Bonanno family boss Joseph Messino. Recent case against Joe Messino in New York. It was seven years before indictments were handed down. With regards to the Colombo family, Paulie Walnuts Gaultieri references the Second Colombo War between the Gallo crew and the Colombo family in the 1970s. I lived through the 70s by the skin of my nuts when the Colombos were going at it. This is also a nod to the fact that Tony Sirico, the actor who portrayed Paulie, was allegedly connected with the Colombo family before he became an actor. As I've covered in a previous video. The link to this is in the comments below. Joseph Pafacci, who, from 1928, was the man who led what would become known as the Colombo crime family, is also mentioned on several occasions throughout the show. Oh man, Profaccio knew how to split his enemies. The Gambino crime family is also referenced on multiple occasions. Former boss John Gotti is mentioned when Tony Soprano is playing golf with his neighbour Dr. Cusimano and his friends. You don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but I gotta know. Did you ever meet John Gotti? Yeah. I know John. Whoa, fuck! And Tony also references former Gambino family underboss turned government witness Sammy the Bull Gravano when talking with Silvio Dante. That's what they said about Gravano. With regards to the Lucchese crime family, Henry Hill, a former Lucchese family associate, is mentioned by Tony in the first season. Fucking kill you. What are you gonna do? Go Henry Hill on me now? You know how many mobsters are selling screenplays and screwing everything up? And the Lucchese family is also mentioned by Tony's daughter Meadow when she is listing who the five families were after Charlie Luciano had Salvatore Maranzano killed in 1931. Lucchese, Gambino, Bonanno, Profaci. 
although technically it was Tommy Gagliano who was boss of what would become known as the Lucchese crime family at this point in time. And Vincent Mangano, who was the boss of what would become known as the Gambino crime family. So, with all of the five New York families mentioned at various points in the show, where exactly do the fictional Lupatazzi crime family fit in? John Johnny Sack Sacramoni, the underboss of the Lupatazzi crime family, initially appears sporadically throughout the first two seasons of The Sopranos. However, interestingly, he is described as a mobster who is representing the interests of two of the five New York families. That he, de facto, controlled your capos, with the backing of two of the New York families, communicating through their emissary, John Sacramoni. The name of the fictional Lupatazzi family isn't actually mentioned until the third season. We learn that Carmine Lupatazzi, the longtime boss of the crime family that bears his name, has been boss of the family for over 30 years. You were Carmine's consigliere for over 30 years. If it wasn't for that little construction beef down in Yonkers, it'd be you one in that family today. At the time The Sopranos was made, John Gotti and Joe Messino were two of the more recent bosses of the Gambino and Bonanno crime families respectively, and both had their names mentioned in the show. And the fact that we saw the fictional Vincent Rizzo mentioned as a Genovese mobster, and that Paulie Walnuts Galtieri references the Columbos, then we can make an assumption that in this fictional universe, the Lupatazzi crime family may well in fact be the Lucchese family, who in the show have since had their name changed. As mentioned, Carmine Lupatazzi has been running the family for over 30 years. In real life, family boss Tommy Lucchese died in 1966 from a brain tumour. He was succeeded by Carmine Mr. Gribbs Tramunti, and then Anthony Tony Dux Corallo, and then Vicar Musso. But in this fictional universe, we can speculate that after Tommy Lucchese died in 1966, it was Carmine Lupatazzi who succeeded him. This could indeed fit with this timeline, knowing that he was boss for over three decades at the time the show was set. In addition, after Carmine Lupatazzi has died, it is stated that he invented point shaving in basketball. My cousin told me it was Carmine who invented point shaving. CCNY versus Kentucky, 1951. This mirrors real life to a certain extent, where Lucchese crime family associate Jimmy Burke and Lucchese crime family captain Paul Vario were involved in a point shaving scandal in the late 1970s. As mentioned by Lucchese crime family associate turned informer Henry Hill in the book Wise Guy by Nicholas Pelleggi. Henry Hill would state, When I got back and told Jimmy and Paulie about the scheme, they loved it. Jimmy loved to beat bookmakers, and Paulie loved to beat anybody. We were standing in Gefkin's bar, and Paulie kissed me on both cheeks. I was back a couple of months, and I was already bringing in one score after another. That's what I did, and that's what made Paulie happy. In real life, the Lucchese family also had a significant interest in New Jersey, the same territory that the Sopranos operated. The Lucchese's had a large, powerful crew based there, which for many years was run by powerful captain Anthony Asaturo. Of course, other New York families such as the Genovese, also had an interest in New Jersey, but I'm purely demonstrating the fact that the Lucchese crime family were heavily involved in that state. In addition, we are told that the Lupatazzi crime family is Brooklyn based. The real Lucchese family had a traditional power base in the Bronx and Harlem. However, in the late 1980s and 1990s, this power base switched to the Brooklyn faction of the family under Vicar Musso and Anthony Casso. Of course, there is obviously the possibility that the writers of The Sopranos hadn't actually thought too much about any of this at all when they invented the Lupatazzi crime family, who, as stated earlier, weren't mentioned by name until season three. And it could be said that the writers frequently name-dropped real-life families and mobsters 
for some real life references. But without overthinking who the Lupatazzi family was supposed to be or their place in the famous Five Families of New York. In the comments below, let me know your thoughts on who you believe the Lupatazzi crime family were potentially based on. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.